industry is currently unique as it is a circular industry. Cycler means that hardly anything is wasted and materials are used over and over again. This industry is based on sericulture. Basically, sericulture is a form of organic agriculture that involves rearing silkworms for the production of silk. The production in sericulture is done by, for example, the mulberry silkworms, which is a type of moth natively living in China. Sericulture requires different steps. Well, mulberry trees are grown that are used for food for silkworms, they love leaves. This is called Mori culture. Well, let's talk about silk a little bit. It is soft, smooth, lustrous, and holds a prestigious place among textile fibers and known as queen of textiles. Raw silk is used for clothing such as shirts, suits, ties, blouses, lingeries, pajamas, jackets, and many more. Well, we have a lot lined up for you, so let's get started. And thank you. Thank you, Kayo. Hello and welcome to yet another exciting episode on Kilimona Biashara Show. You know, this is a show that brings you different types of farming methods and all emerging trends in the agribusiness world. And speaking of emerging trends in the agribusiness world, look at this. Today, we want to focus on a rather unique type of farming. I'm speaking about sericulture. Basically, sericulture is farming of worms. There are different types of worms, but today we want to venture or focus on silkworm. Are you curious to know what this is? Well, then join me in the farm. Let's go. Hello. Hi, Linda. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Very, very well. Karibu sana. It's, I thought I would be seeing silkworms here, but no, it's it's a bush. This is our forest, <laughs> mulberry forest. We'll go to the silkworms later. We'll go to the silkworms. Yes, indeed. Tell me, so what's happening here? This is our mulberry forest. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where we grow our mulberry trees mm -hmm. because silkworms only eat mulberry trees. Ah. They are called different things in mm -hmm. various languages. Mm -hmm. uh, the most common one in uh, Bantu languages is Ndare. Ndare in Bantu. I think I'll find out what it's called in my native language. <laughs> so in mulberry, think strawberry, yes. think blueberry, ah. mulberry. It's one of the berries That's one of in the short. Berries. I know here in Kenya, silkworm is not well known, but how did the idea conceptualize? How did you decide I want to settle on silkworm farming? So at Silk Origin, we, 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 we went into deep research mm -hmm. onto some of the organic materials mm -hmm. that are very, very uh, necessary in the world, but not produced enough of. Mm -hmm. And silk, uh, the origin of silk propagation is in China. Mm -hmm. And uh, we looked at their weather patterns. Mm -hmm. They do not have the soil, the sun, mm -hmm. uh, the labor to be able to do it uh, all year round. Yeah. And uh, we saw that as an opportunity for us to pick. Mm -hmm. And we went uh, into large scale farming of the trees you see around you. Mm -hmm. And uh, also into research onto the right mix of uh, the worms, mm -hmm. to the, the eggs that you yeah. get for the worms, mm -hmm. uh, the right type of the, of the leaf mm -hmm. of the tree that you get. Yeah. But we come out with the correct uh, value and the correct uh, silk quality mm -hmm. that uh, we'll be looking for. But I'm just curious, by the time we get to the worms, where the worms are, it must be an entire process. How do, how do you begin this? What uh, we've done is that uh, this, the propagation of silk was always in the wild. Mm -hmm. And therefore, 
the silkworm was domesticated yeah. so that can be looked after just like cattle it, it's 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 a livestock like any other mm -hmm. and it goes through a 28 day life cycle mm -hmm. where you get uh, to feed the worm mm -hmm. and it moves from one stage to another mm -hmm. until you end up with a cocoon the cocoon that has the silkworm which I'll show you yeah. uh, later and now since you've been in this business for quite some time now what are the benefits of doing silkworm farming so sericulture is a cultivation of uh, uh, of the silk worms. It's a growing of the silk worms, and moriculture is a cultivation of the trees to produce the mulberry mulberry leaves. And uh, what what we've done is to make sure that everybody understands that there is no wastage in both processes. So the leaves, the stem, the fruits, the roots, everything in a mulberry tree has uses. And when you go to silk, the the silk worms themselves. The chrysalis, which is what is left inside when you open the uh, the pupa, uh, the, the the droppings themselves, all of them have uses. Uh, the droppings are extremely rich in protein and can be used for chicken feed. Can also be brought back to the farm as, as manure. Uh, we also have uh, uses for the uh, if you have broken cocoons, for instance, is what they used to stuff pillows uh, with. It's also very good for for facials because. It is used in the facial cleansing uh, process. Mm -hmm. So everything in silk has uses. Yeah. And that's why we're encouraging farmers to partner with Silk Origin Limited. Mm -hmm. And we will show you how to grow this properly. Mm -hmm. We will off take uh, your product mm -hmm. as we go along. Yeah. We will uh, give you the benefits of our research mm -hmm. in exchange for you getting something in your pocket mm -hmm. beyond the usual cash crops yeah. that are known to farmers. Mm -hmm. But now I'm just wondering, how is the uptake here in the country locally? How is the business locally? As you can imagine, it's brand new. So uh, there's a lot of surprise. There's a lot of curiosity, yeah. let me say. Curiosity is actually what is driving many farmers. Mm -hmm. But they want to see you do it and then show them how to do it with your own farm as a model farm like this one. Mm -hmm. And then you walk them through because none of them will want to do this process without some assistance. Yeah. And this is why Silk Origin exists. Mm -hmm. We want to be the focal point of knowledge for farmers on how to do this properly mm -hmm. so that our product is also acceptable in international markets. Mm -hmm. I know in every successful business, challenges abound. What are some of the challenges you've experienced as a silkworm farmer or in this type of farming? One, silkworms are voracious eaters and therefore you need a constant supply of fresh, clean leaves. And as you've seen with the drought that was there, that was not an easy thing to do. So you must prepare your ecosystem to be ready for interventions as far as water is concerned. We have uh, made our small dam to be able to supply our water, water pan, to supply our, our crops with some water, even during the dry season. So you have to prepare for that. At times you get some diseases, like some of our trees are affected now. And uh, what you do, you must weather that storm. So you must have enough uh, trees on various sites on your farm to make sure that not all crops uh, are infected. Some of the natural ways of trying to control the spread of disease. Would you say this is a profitable venture? Silk farm is a profitable venture. You cannot apply enough of the silk required. So when it comes to production of silk, I'm just curious, <laughs> just like any other Kenyan, by the time you achieve like making a bed sheet or making a particular cloth, how much silk will I need? must be a lot. Yes indeed, you need a lot of silk and because of the various uses of silk, because of the various classes, the various uh, uh, levels of quality of silk, that will make, that will, that will, is what will determine what it is used for. for. For the highest thread will be probably for clothing, the next one will be for bedding and then you'll have other uh, uses like on uh, stuffing pillows and uh, the, the other uh, no, cosmetic uses which require a different type of uh, quality for, for silk. Therefore, the silk quality you produce determines what it will be used for. And that's why we go for top quality each time. So as a country, we can really be self-reliant if many farmers really venture into this, we can actually be an exporter of silk. Tuanza mwanzo, mkulima mwenyewe ataweza kutegemea silk kwa biashara yake na kwa maisha yake. Na next level, wakulima wakiwa wengi kama sako, na washikano wakiwa county, alafu taifa la Kenya pia, lijulikano kwa export ya silk. Tuwache kujulikano utali, majani chai, kahawa, silk ingia katika msururuo.
Thank you so much. That has been quite insightful. We truly appreciate. Thank you for allowing us into your farm today. Karibuni tena and we're also very happy to have you. Wow. We now want to venture into the planting and everything the nitty gritty is involved. Yes, Andy is indeed on the farm mm -hmm. and he'll walk you through the cultivation of the, uh, of the trees, yes. taking care of the worms, mm -hmm. everything that it takes for you to get to the final stand of silk. Okay, yes. yeah, I'm quite curious. I can't wait. Karibu sana. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. No, no, I have prepare hapa. No, no, hapa have to prepare for this meeting. I 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 have to prepare for this is everything that uh, they have prepared here. How about this? Thank you. Welcome to the meeting. Nanimona, you have this and you also have seedlings. Yes, we have seedlings that What's are ready. What's the difference? The, the reason why we... When there is no, when the rain uh -huh. is is low, mm -hmm. you can use the seedlings. Uh -huh. But when you have enough rain, you can just use the, ah. the cuttings, which is very easy. Ah. So we can now start by planting the cuttings. Okay. Because right now we have enough rain here, mm -hmm. and we can we can plant. Yes. Okay. So where do I start? I start here. Yes, you start there. Okay. So uh, what happens here? Mm -hmm. uh, we plant the mulberry trees, uh, 2.5 feet along uh -huh. the lines. Okay. And uh, five feet along the rows. Okay. Yeah, so we can now start Linda. Mm -hmm. So I follow this line while you follow the other line, yeah? Yes. Okay. So you make sure the, the cuttings is almost uh, down the soil. Uh-huh. Just... But now Andy, how do I get to know the centimeters? Uh, Linda, before mm. you start coming to the farm, mm -hmm. you have to make sure that you get the right measurements uh, with, with, the, with your with, with your camp and ah. then when you come to the farm uh -huh. you now start planting when yes. you already have the correct centimeters. Yeah, so I use the nodes. Yeah, you use the nodes. Ah, okay, so I plant here. Plant there. Mm -hmm. So I plant on this other side. Yeah, turn the camera on this side. You have to till the land so uh -huh. well so that uh, when you are planting it's so easy. Mm. Uh, and I see this is loam soil. It does so well with loam soil, yeah? Yes, mulberry trees mm -hmm. accept any kind of soil uh -huh. uh, so long as there is enough rainfall. Uh -huh. uh, it's, it's, go, uh, it's, it's only in harsh mm -hmm. climatic conditions that the mulberry tree cannot do well. Uh -huh. yes. Okay, now we can plant the seedlings. Yes, Okay. we can now plant the seedlings. Uh -huh. we, Uh, you remove the top. Mm -hmm. So with this, uh, it's not hard to plant. Yeah, it's not hard. Mm. Yeah, it's so easy. Mm. You make sure you you put enough soil mm -hmm. and make sure you the the plant. Mine is okay. Yes. Ah, my dear is here. Right. You have to dispose there. Yeah? You have to dispose so that mm -hmm. the farm, you have to conserve the environment yes. and you make sure the, the farm is clean. Yes, I know yes. your farm is organic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, Andy, thank you so much. See you on the other side, yeah? Okay, Linda. <laughs> let me prepare the other side. Okay. See you there. All right. So this is the production unit? Yes, Linda. Ah, Welcome wow. Down. Such a beehive of activity right here. Today, we are focusing on silkworm farming. And you're curious, what's getting in? Those are just mulberry leaves. Do you know what this will be used for? Let's go in and find out. 
Yes, welcome, Linda. We have to change to wear the crocs so mm -hmm. that we can enter the rearing house mm -hmm. because of biosafety measures. Okay. Of the worms, they are very delicate. Uh, that's okay. I, I actually don't mind. So we, we put it on here. Yes. Okay. Now you can dip your legs in this water. Okay. Yes. Ah. Welcome, Linda. Thank you. To our airing house. Ooh. This is the silicones. And this is so beautiful. They are so white. Yeah, the, the uh, silicones have uh, the normal insect uh, stages mm -hmm. for the uh, egg, larva, yes. pupa, and then the other. But how long will it take to hatch? Hmm? These are now the eggs. Yes. The, this is where we, we, we have our own hatchery. We produce our own eggs. Mm -hmm. We had collaborated with the Isipe and Calro, mm -hmm. so that is where they trained us until this stage now we can have our own eggs. Mm -hmm. So if this is the first stage of the worms. They are mm -hmm. so tiny yeah. when they are very young. Yeah, so they... during when they are young, mm -hmm. when they are at the first stage, they don't take an hour. They just take a little space. Uh -huh. You don't need, they can't take the whole space in the mm -hmm. rearing house. Yeah. So <clears throat> this is now the second stage. Mm -hmm where the worms now after every stage mm. what happens mm. after every five days mm. the eggs mold by molding i mean mm -hmm. they share their skin so they, they stay for two days mm -hmm. without feeding mm -hmm. after the, that day now they start feeding and they have progressed to the next to the next stage mm. yeah so this is the start stage mm -hmm. the start stage now they have grown mm -hmm. as i as i have said after every four days mm -hmm. the, the, the fifth day yeah. they mold they share their, their, their skin, skin mm -hmm. to the next level. Yeah. So now this is the fourth stage. Mm -hmm. It only takes uh, around oh, 28 days to mm -hmm. 30, yeah. depending with the temperatures and the conditions mm -hmm. of your rearing house. So this is now stage five mm -hmm. of the worms. Yeah. This is the final stage. From, from here now, mm -hmm. from stage five, yeah. they won't mold again now. They just move to there. You have yeah. to have the montages. This is called a montage, uh -huh. where the worm will attach, you, as you can see, mm -hmm. this one has now attached itself here. So to a particular worm? Yeah. Tell us, how does it attach itself to that particular montage? The, the worm mm -hmm. has two proteins, mm -hmm. sericin mm -hmm. and fibrin. So mm -hmm. when the worm now starts attaching itself here, mm -hmm. it releases the, through the mouth, through the, that saliva mm -hmm. spinning. Mm -hmm. So that's now releasing the thread. Oh. Oh, so it's actually saliva, not the skin. Yeah, saliva. Mm -hmm. So a uh, mature cocoon mm -hmm. has around one, 1,200 meters mm -hmm. of silk fiber. Mm -hmm. Yes, which one, which can be now extracted to wow. silk. Wow. Yes, so it, when it attaches itself here, mm -hmm. it spins for almost seven days, mm -hmm. four days to seven. Mm -hmm. And then you just leave it for sometimes to dry up, mm -hmm. to harden up. Mm -hmm. After hardening up now, you because we are now commercializing, commercializing the, the cocoon, mm -hmm. you have to make sure you dry it using, you can use an oven, uh -huh. you can use direct sunlight. Mm -hmm. So we, we use direct sunlight when we have enough sunlight. Mm -hmm. But for better and to avoid uh, the, the worm progressing yeah. to, the, to the another level, mm -hmm. you have to dry it using uh, the oven. So basically, it's like a harvesting point for you? Yes, the... this is the harvesting point for us. Ah. So for for us to get the quality mm -hmm. warm, yes. we must have healthy leaves, mm -hmm. very nutritious leaves, mm -hmm. so that we can have a bigger worm yeah. that can produce up to a, a, some 1.5 grams. Mm -hmm. And when rearing these silkworms, tell us some of the other measures that you would really have to put keen interest. Let's say even the, the structure, how should it look like a typical rearing house? A typical rearing house should be well ventilated mm -hmm. because uh, when you have a well ventilated uh, rearing house, mm -hmm. the leaves will not wither. The, even the worms will, the worms doesn't need the higher temperatures beyond 30 degrees and above. Mm -hmm. So it's better to have a very cool, a well ventilated and free from any pests mm -hmm. uh, like lizards and rats. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the pests that feed, that can set back. Mm -hmm. 
bring set back to the farm. So even these structures that are right here, they are in a partic they have particular measurements. Yeah, the, the, it's it now depends on the type of rearing house you have. Mm -hmm. Either it's an it's in a squeezed space, yeah. you can even add some more beds. Mm -hmm to measure up with your space that you have. Mm -hmm. So because have, we have enough space here, we can do even up to 400,000 worms inside here. Mm -hmm. So here, what's the capacity and how do you manage all of it? Uh, we have done up to 200,000 worms mm -hmm. and we have managed to, to, to keep them very healthy mm -hmm. because we have enough leaves. Yeah. yeah, because first of all, the initial stages, mm -hmm. you have to, you need to have a mulberry plantation. Yeah. That mulberry plantation will enable you mm -hmm. to feed the worms to any extent. And uh, because we are doing large scale, mm -hmm. so we are we we do we have enough leaves for for the worms. Yeah, not as in a cooler sana, but do they feed intensively? They really feed mm -hmm. like the goats, more <laughs> than the goats. In fact, I can say more than the goats, mm -hmm. especially in the last two stages Jeez. from stage four and five. Mm -hmm. Those are the stages that the worms feed so much. Yeah, we feed them four times a day mm -hmm. uh, in the morning mm -hmm. because uh, by midday already they are done with, with the leaves. So mm -hmm. you have to add them some more. Mm -hmm. Then at around four before yeah. we leave here. Mm -hmm. And then there's someone who feeds them at around seven. So tell me some of the value addition that you've really tapped into because I see you have mulberry as well as silk. Yes, Linda. I will first start with the mulberry mulberry tree mm -hmm. value addition that we've got from the from the mulberry tree. Mm -hmm. And Linda, we have a mulberry fruit mm -hmm. that we have used the mulberry fruits to make wine. Yes. We call it tropical fruit wine mm -hmm. because we obviously wine is always made with grapes yeah. from either South Africa or Egypt. So what happens here? We use our fruits mm -hmm. to make tropical fruit wine, mm -hmm. mulberry wine, which is here. Yeah, we'll definitely test. Yes, which we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll test the wine. Uh -huh. We also have the mulberry green tea, mm -hmm. which has medicinal value. Uh -huh. Yes, mm -hmm. it's an antioxidant. Mm -hmm. It has three minerals, yeah. iron, calcium, and zinc, mm -hmm. which is very good for our health. Yeah. It also, it reduces pressure and diabetes. Mm -hmm sugar glucose for in our bodies and there are no benefits from silkworm uh, from after the worm has just completed here mm -hmm. spinning yes. you we, we kill the pupa inside mm -hmm. so inside the pupa mm -hmm. inside the, the cocoon mm -hmm. we, uh, we what we do here we do what's called span silk mm -hmm. we can do span silk mm -hmm. we also do reeling reeling is the extraction or rewinding the silk thread oh. from the cocoon. Yes. So that's also another thing that we are doing here. Mm -hmm. And that is now our, our we yeah. now commercialize, commercialize that. Uh -huh. So basically you sell the silk in a raw means, in a raw manner. Yeah, from the, after the cocoon mm -hmm. has formed, mm -hmm. we now unwind mm -hmm. the silk thread yes. to create a raw silk. Oh. Yes, ah, raw yeah. silk. Mm -hmm. Then after that, now you process now to silk yeah. by the coming. Oh yes, I remember Peter mentioned that he also wants to tap into uh, making using silk for hospital purpose. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Also, the, if you, you can extract the two proteins that I told you mm -hmm. for cosmetic, mm -hmm. for making sachets, mm -hmm. and uh, several biomedical products. Wow, so how do you normally tend up for it? Do you touch them? Yes, Linda. <laughs> the worms are very harmless. Mm -hmm. They can't bite anyone. Okay. So uh, I have even some clubs for you okay. to put yeah, on. Because wear. for a first timer, they can make your hands feel uneasy. Yes, it can be uneasy, even yeah. just looking at them. <laughs> <laughs> just wear the clothes so that I okay. can give you the worms here. Uh -huh. Linda, the worms are harmless. They are harmless. So you can even touch them. Thank you so much, Andy. We truly appreciate uh, for letting us come here. Welcome, Linda. Uh -huh. Let me now check on the cocoons on the other side. Oh, okay, thank you so much. Welcome. Wow. I know deep down I'm so scared, but well, 
it has been an amazing show right you've learned something from silkworm farming and all the benefits that you can that you can reap from this so yeah before they crawl over me thank you so much for being part of the show i hope you've enjoyed see you again next friday right ah bye bye <laughs> <laughs>